I think it takes imagination, hope, and courage. And Jeff has all three of them. Absolutely. Well, and the reality is the cars have come out of here and gone to Amelia Island. They've gone to Pebble Beach. People who see them probably have no idea of their humble beginnings. Yeah. That's really incredible. It's incredible how many he's gotten done with strategic partnerships or yeah. cars he's done. I think, right. I think it's like, oh, geez, about 26 in 16 years. Well, and that Maverick that uh, went to Pebble Beach was that Amelia, the blue one, pretty extraordinary car. Wow. Well, if they could talk, yeah. I think they'd say, take me next. <laughs> totally worth the trip to come out here and see all these. Good. I just uh, applaud Jeff's sense of purpose is the word I guess I'm looking for that he he he's not dissuaded by the fact that a lot of these are in pretty rough condition he's optimistic and ambitious and enthusiastic yeah and an incredible advocate for these I mean without him the time I, I don't think he could have hit it at a better time for when he you know, was able to get them exactly yeah. exactly because so many of these cars were probably not all that far away from just going ah who's really going to want it we're just going to break it, it up and throw right. it away and then also too the fact you know he did that cross country trip for like six or nine months and was able to meet with like 90 percent of the people that were there firsthand mm -hmm. and those audio interviews and the ephemera yeah. oh I mean, find, finding people seems to be in cars is one of his uh fortes and it's just amazing because uh you, you a lot of this people haven't thought about it in years and he he's managed to uh to do it it's very uh, what's the word commendable it really is so jeff what are we looking at here this well, we first could, car we i don't could... recognize at all well, look at this fucking car that's a dragon i've got five cars of dragons out here there's only like 100 or so 150 i got five mm -hmm. out here i've got well uh, the la Siena, made by the testaguza brothers in michigan oxnard Oxford, Oxnard, Michigan, and they built 12. I've got Motor Trend articles, I've got original. Of course, I found the family and have original photos and build pictures. And and for the longest time, I, mean, I thought I was the only one who knew about them. Paul owned one, and Paul's is still around. When he sold it 10, 15 years ago, it has a unique front end. I don't know where it is, if we ever dug out who, who bought it. So there's another, there's two or three out here. Actually, there's one here. This was probably the electronic version. Remember the electric La Sierra? Because yeah. I got this in California. Um, it's only not, well, then and the body, here's an unbuilt La Sierra that we age properly. Fiberglass farm ages things properly. Well, this looks like an Aston Martin, if you look quickly. What, this is this? done by Hugh Jorgensen, who did the first full cars out of the art center in the early 50s. He designed the Victor S1, he designed the Victor S4. Bill Warner also always liked this, um, and it's a beautiful car when it's, when it's fully done. Um, no S4s are... Restored. There's several in nice shape, but no one. Hey, is, August, he's, done. he's done a well, customized done one. A He'll lot of a lot of modifications. A beautiful car. And so here's parts of a debonair. Get the, I've got most of the fiberglass parts stored inside, but not everything. I don't think I knew about your fascination with Kaisers. Hmm. Obviously, there's quite a few here. Well, I don't do anything kind of quietly, I guess. I, no. I started what I started to do is I, I developed a car with Rafi Manassi and Dan Palatnik called the Tahitian Dragon. I always wanted to determine the 1954 two door version. Right. And so someone said, no, but you can't find any two doors. Well, I think I have eight or nine out here. We're used to I have I gave some away. I was well, building them up to possibly do this called the Tahitian Dragon, a 1954 two door because the dragons were three doors. This is a dragon. It had wire wheels, some fancy chrome, but it, right. this one's been dechromed a lot. I've but never a seen a, a pickup truck. Uh, that's like the only one for 51. A, a Kaiser Ranchero. A Kaiser Ranchero, 1951. I found that last year, and it was hand-built by people up in Minnesota. I'm owner number three, but owner, if I get it running, it'll be just a, a two people who are two and Did the owners. factory build it, or did no, somebody else no. build it? No, they built it. it was a, well he bought his 51 Manhattan new, and then yeah. in about 1960, he made it into a pickup. He did a really nice job, actually. Yeah. Very happy with it. and I always like the dashboards on these 51, 2, 3s. And this is a dragon I found at a junkyard five miles from my house. A real dragon. So, uh, their uh, Kaiser's interior design guy, Carlton Carlton Spencer. Spencer. Yeah, I remember that from an article years ago, and he he did all these 
interesting patterns and, oh, they, were and they had lovely interiors. And I've always liked the heart so heart shaped window. Yeah. Sweetheart windshield. That's, that's a Darren touch. Oh, oh and there's the um <laughs> the Nacional. Nacional. Yeah, this is another dragon over here. I just I saved them when I can. I I think some cars deserve a second life and we've taken them with your help to Pebble Beach when they're done. Yeah, through myself well, or other ownership. Uh, you know, part of taking cars to Pebble is the notion of showing things that others have maybe only read about and never seen. And I mean, this. All right. So I, uh, I, I this, look at this, this would car. This be incredible to, to be restored. It really would. I look at this car and it's metal. Now, the guys down here and people that work with me at a restoration shop, this would be very expensive, but very worthwhile. But down here, we've got friends and they do metal work. And this is not curvaceous Maserati Ferrari. It's pretty fairly simple. And uh, they're more than capable of doing that. Is that a Ladari over there? Yeah, that's actually his now. Just, it's going to be up in Buffalo. He's getting that one. Wow! And he's getting the wildfire next to it, and he's getting the wildfire over here. I figure he's thirty-three, and if I give him enough cars, he won't have a chance to buy anything else, thereby solidifying a kind of an approach to. What we have to hope is that his lovely museum lady <laughs> is still with him after he brings some of these things home. Well, thankfully, I have. Uh have a shop that I'm buying, which is close enough to home so I can get home quickly, but not so close that she has to see everything. Here's another La Sierra. Oh, spell that, Jeff. L-A-S-A-E-T-T-A. -A -T -T -A. I may be getting a restore, a, an original one. I found one in Mississippi. And hopefully yeah, if everything works out, one of, one of the original cars, all done with the supercharger and everything. And then I'll try to find what homes for these. What was the original engine? Well, of course, like any of these hand-built cars, you could be Anything you want. One was a I Hudson, guess. one was a Chevy. These are full size 110 inch Ford Customs, mm. two seater. Yep. But the 1950s cars that were close to Detroit, like the Pesaguza, the La Sierra, mm -hmm. the Chicago, in which you saw earlier, they look more like Detroit cars. And, yes. uh, yeah. uh, and as you got further away from Detroit, they look more like European sports cars. Very heavy. So, what happens? We know what happens to metal when it sits outside for years. What happens to fiberglass? Uh, uh, depending on how it was built, if it was mm -hmm. built by a boat company, someone who knew what they were doing, um, and these people did a great job in this fiberglass, it can become a little more brittle mm -hmm. and crazed and cracked. You can see some here. Usually it's an impact damage or hole, but really the question more is how do I save what I've got no matter what, because the solution is always the same. You generally build up and give strength to the back. You try mm -hmm. to keep the style lines from being mowed down by sandpaper too much. Right. But you can encapsulate very light cloth. If you sand everything down and you fix everything from underneath, sand down on the surface and then we try to encapsulate everything with a new layer of very light cloth oh. what that does is it gives it a whole new skin over the old skin so that it minimizes or eliminates when a car heats up you can see this hole that was fixed and that hole was fixed by giving a whole new skin with light cloth it becomes like a, a steel like car. new again wow yeah. uh, this is one of the factory that's they made six factory show dragons in turquoise Oh. And of course, dragons are rare enough. I had to go find a show dragon. I bought it from Randy Rutherford, who you might know. Randy's up in Pennsylvania, but now down here in Florida. Okay. And that's one of three that exists now with a special interior, which I've taken out already in turquoise and gold washed wire wheels, which I have too. And that wildfire that's leading up against it, that's the one yeah. that is from Buffalo on the Curtis chassis. Had you been here before, Ken? Yes. Okay. I just can't remember. I just didn't remember. I mean, it's been a long time, but yes. So this is the Cars by Architect. This was done by Carl Luckenbach. Carl was the architect for the Pontiac Silverdome. And he built this when he was going to, what's that uh, famous? The, uh, the coupe? No, the, the, uh, this was Merrill Powell's, and you know Merrill from, yep. that's the larger version, and that's now Mike's too. Um, this is, looks like a, a buyer's a little bit. Yeah, well, it was like a Ferrari. I asked Carl, because Carl, Carl's been out to the farms before. He just passed away recently. And I found the car up in Detroit. He had no idea it existed. It was in Bloomfield Hills. What's that? It's a school that looks like Hogwarts up there that all the kids go to. They were from the Detroit families. Um, um, Center for Creative Cranbrook. Study? Cranbrook. Oh, Cranbrook. Yes. Yeah. Cranbrook. So he yeah. was a student at Cranbrook, and he built this in high school and college. Finished it. Well, finished it at this level in 1954. Um, he was uh, in Ann Arbor all this uh, work life and moved and retired to Jacksonville, Florida. I'll tell the story about well, this looks like an Allard. Well, yeah, that's another story. But this is at Cars by Architects. Oh, Cars by Architects. And I've got a number of different Cars by Architects, some well-known, some that should be well-known. Carl oh, Luckenbach yeah. would fit. You know, this would be an example. Besides Raymond Lowy's Lincoln and Frank Lloyd's 
I forgot what Frank. Well, we are going to have to clean them up a little for Pebble Beach. Well, they'd be have to be. Once you tell me, you got three years, then boom, they go. You know. Uh huh. So the Luckenbach is the one that he's got a brand new Lincoln motor in it that was on the dealership floor, never fired, right? Chris, I don't know how much brand new it is, been fitting all these times. <laughs> that shark I've had since 1984, 39 years. The other one, the nice one, I've had since 1980, so how many is 43 years? And I have another shark, and I've got molds so, for a shark. To the uh, to the untrained eye, mm -hmm. these almost don't look savable. Oh but, God! But, but so t so tell me how. I mean, you look at something like this, and like that roadster, it's great lines, terrific looking. Oh, what would be perfect. the first and second and third steps? On well, I've like already that. got a couple of it done. Um, the body, first of all, you take a look at the body. If um, is it solid to work with? Actually, it doesn't matter if it's solid or not. I want to know what I'm working with. It's, it's just as can be. <laughs> so fiberglass can deteriorate if it's done poorly. So you have a very solid base. Take a look at the sides. There's almost no body. Straight. Yeah. There's remarkable. almost no warpage or anything. No. Nope. So I've already actually taken this body off this chassis. The chassis could be repaired, but I have another chassis hiding out over there. This was he built it on a 48 with um, cross springs, buggy springs in the front and rear. 48 and Ford. 48 Ford. And then he put, so you can tell from the rear axle. But then he took, he made the rear spring longitudinal. He put two in the back. And I asked him, why'd you do that? Because in 49, you could have had a longitudinal and an open drive shaft and so forth. He goes, I just didn't know. So mm. we picked up a, a oh. 1949 with independent front suspension for this car. So it would go on a slightly updated chassis. And I got his approval for it. He wanted to paint it red. He wanted to put doors. And I he went through everything he wanted to finish it with. But in terms of where do you start? Well, keep in mind, this doesn't have doors or a trunk. It doesn't have air conditioning, it doesn't have heating, it doesn't have windshield wipers, it doesn't have... This, I used to buy what, like wiring harnesses, but then we just started... There's almost nothing to wire. Headlights, taillights, brake, hmm. simple wires to the engine. And depending if you go mechanical or electromechanical, you can even keep it simpler on the dash. So um, his idea in when this car was done was that you would provide a chassis, you'd buy the body from him? Oh, no, he was doing this for himself. This is oh. a one-off. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, a lot of these, like this was what you just said for Victorus made sense. You could buy this body. And in fact, what was our friend's name who did this car? Gino Grandin. Gino Grandin built this car. It was a show car in the mid-60s. It was bought in the early 60s, mm -hmm. body only. And then it's he like built it into a show car. Corvette grill, it looks like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, I've got famous pictures. Take a look at the inside. Um, I know it looks like it's not doable. I just have been through so many of these cars. They're easily, you just start taking them apart. You don't, we've already got a new chassis for this car. Right. I think, do we? Yeah, yeah we do. Actually, it's over there. We passed it. Passed am, I, it. am I looking at wood here? This looks like wood. Most of the cars, glass bar, Wood Hill, Victorious, they're all done in wood. And we use a wood replacement, like for the deck of boats. Right. We make a fiberglass wood oh, kind of composite. This is wood here. Yeah. Jeff, you want to show them the steering wheel? Yeah. I forgot how it works. It's got a pole on the other side. Oh. <laughs> wow. He made it all by hand. That's impressive. Yeah. And it pulls out. It stays on there, though. Yeah, it's just kind of... Nice little car here. And this is the gift for Paul. What is it? 1958 Victor C3. This is what you're getting? Yeah. Oh. That's that black Corvette over there. That's what's giving its life to this. Yeah, that black Corvette... It running, driving, beautiful will be the basis for this one now. So we passed it. It's like a 1978 or 80. The Allard, there were a number of people who loved Allard K2s, mm -hmm. and they built their own versions, which is kind of cool. This side, you can see better what they did. It's actually kind of pretty. This is both a fiberglass and steel. I've got the convertible top and the interior. It's all leather inside. Uh, it was a fiberglass hood, which is here, and fiberglass sides. Right. But everything else was steel. This is like 49 Plymouth or 38 Plymouth or something. I forgot what it was. When I got this, it had the leather interior. It was still in nice shape. And it, had, uh, and it still has four Barani wire wheels. Knockoffs. Hmm. We turned now, I restored them, and they're in my storage. Oh, this is where the Barani is. I'm really wondering. It was on this one. Yeah, this was a high-end car. Compton, California. Straight out of Compton. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> and, but, you know, now they look sad. But every one of these cars, you know, they, people, they've been ignored for years. This is my favorite Dragon, which are hopefully this week, Mike and I will pull it and put it on the other side. I have too many cars in my house already. And what's this here? 
debonair. And another debonair. I don't know how I found some. They made six. I found five. That's really incredible. Well, we know how good they can look after seeing Paul really Sable's can. car at uh, at Pebble Beach. They really, it was pretty impressive. Tudor Kaiser, Tudor Kaiser. I just kept calling. Every time I found a Tudor Kaiser, they said they didn't exist. I bought them. They only made, they only made 900 Tudor Kaisers from 54. And it's is a, the uh, greenhouse different or do they no. simply not do the door? They the just, back? the 54s have the prettier front end based on the Buick XP300. Ah. And otherwise, it's the same as the 53. Right. The shell, the back, everything. The 54s have the cooler taillights, mm -hmm. but you just put those right on the 53 body. You can actually make a 53 right into a 54. As they probably did because they had sales problems. I think there was a big depression and other economic problems in 53. So right. they, um, they couldn't sell everything. They just retitled them. And this is Paul's new car. I'm going to give it to Paul. Hey, put your meter right there. I'll take a picture. Favorite one, right, Paul? Stop this. All right. It's beautiful. Getting a picture of me throwing up here. Oh, I got already a picture of you throwing up back there. Great. This was built for a San Antonio department store owner for his wife. It came with a special compartment in the trunk just for shopping for dresses on the weekends. It's all written up in Speed Age magazine in the 50s. Oh, good. Yeah, this is really. See, Ken likes it. Yes. <laughs> he used to respect it. <laughs> There's something majestic about it, I think. You know, it really has a, well, a presence. Well, then I, what I like about it is I, you know, I did all the research with the family and did all the history and the pictures and everything. So the cars, to me, represent families and stories. When I can't find a story, it really is sad. Awesome. Red Ricketts built this car. This, you're looking at the first Veta Ventura. Veta Ventura. Veta Ventura is the Texas Apollo. Vanguard Industries built the Texas Apollo, which was the Apollo leftover bodies from Intermechanica. They built this first. It debuted in 1963 in Cobo Hall or 64, all fiberglass. It was so complicated to build, they decided not to build any more. I took it out of a junkyard in Texas. <laughs> so when you when you visit these families, and Frederick these long and his gone family cars, and so forth, yeah. they must think that they've died and gone to heaven. I mean, if someone is interested in these He's well, tired. Jacqueline, Jacqueline Bloom, who I just found for the uh, Packard, is her father Mortimer, or Morty Bloom, hadn't thought about the cars in years, is going through and looking at pictures of her father and just enjoying her, all the memories. The car hasn't begun to be restored. Joan Dawes hadn't talked about a Ladari that her and her husband built for 40 years until I found them in 2007. The Woodhill have... family, the same thing. The Diamnasino family, same thing. The Debonair family, when the Debonair, Paul's Debonair goes to Amelia Island, Phil Began's family will be there, the daughter, Francis Amorosa. And uh, Steve Tremulous, who goes, he'll be there too. What are we oh, and Val Dialoki, Val's it? family, he's the one that built them all. That's so, a Maverick. So I hope our audience is realizing that Jeff can look at any one of these cars and pull up the names of family members, builders, Sterling, what show it appeared in. Sterling Gladwin um, is the guy who designed and built the Mavericks. Bruce Gladwin helped us do the research. When you did your article for Pal, right. we were talking to Tom, Mor Tom Morose, Tom Gross, uh, it was the nephew. Oh yeah, I remember him. Yeah, and he's so the that, one. That looks smaller than a Maverick. That's because the front end was pushed down by the, by the trees during one of the hurricanes. <laughs> if we go <laughs> the other side, that explains it. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd see that long straight hood, but it's been crushed down. It's just fiberglass. Right. This is the Packard chassis, 400. that has the engine, transmission, everything working. I guess that motor's for the torsion bars. I was told I have the whole car, and we started piecing out. It had been hit by a hurricane, went down on, on the car. So I just creased everything out, and we just got the wheels from yesterday. I might transfer the body to this chassis once it's cleaned up and restored, in have, theory. Yeah. This is a Packard 400. So would you sand, uh, blast this, I guess? Oh, God, no. No, I just clean it up like you'd be building a Packard 400. Clean it up, paint it, get everything working, torsion bar. And then I take the body from the black one you saw right. and mm -hmm. put it on here. That's the back of the Victor S4. Right, and this is a... Uh, Victor C2. This is the green car. It's a smaller version. Like Allied made a small swallow, and they made a large swallow called the Blackhawk. This is the C2, the smaller version. So what, Mike about, has one. what about a rear window? You, you oh, cut yeah. that this in is, yourself? And... Yeah. In fact, some have cut a sunroom even, but not a rear window. Uh, for some reason, this people tell me it looks like a Pegaso. It does. Lines. 
Yeah, probably because of how the body is so smooth right now. But this one is typically Ladari Sicilian, so see the inner door wells. Yeah, well, yeah, this is Ladari bought Victrus, and they continued with some upgrades, and they made better doors. Doors that had fiberglass uh, door jams and fiberglass dull full doors. That's what this one has. Yeah, that's the tell between the original Victrus and this Ladari Sicilian. This is a recent move here. I've, I've owned it, finally paid for it. This year, it brought it here. This is America's first post-war Renault race car. <laughs> it's all the space frame. And it's, built, fi it's fiberglass as well. Built by, aluminum Dave, yeah, built by yeah, aluminum belly pan, aluminum sides, aluminum doors. The front and rear are exactly the same. One mold to make two. The Vale Wright car was the same too when he did a, a race car called the Little Stinker. That was smart. They didn't have to have two, uh, two different molds. Correct, yeah. Wow. Phantom Stardust. And some so, of them I've got chassis for. To me, the body and chassis, it's all the same thing. This is the most famous Ladari race car over there. That was built by David Simon and his nephew, Gene Simon, who's a friend. And I just bought it from Myron Vernus, who you know. You so, bought it from Myron? Yeah. Myron, it's been an Ohio car all its life, and it kept going from place to place. Myron finally, was... when it, uh, he's cutting down on cars, I bought it from him about six months ago. Huh. Oh, the frame is, yeah, you should see the racing frame on it. It's fantastic. It's Packard powered, Ken. Packard V8 powered. Amazing. Another Victor S4. There's a shark mold out here and a, big, a CRV. Incredible, aren't they? I mean, yeah. yeah, peek, peek into the cockpit and take a look at the chassis. What's What's amazing to me is that so many of these were actually cars, and they were running and driving. Yeah. And I mean, here's an electric fuel pump and a a uh, well, this was a lot of chassis motor work this, here. This was a winning race car that won mid um, oh, I call it Mid America, but SCCA, it wasn't uh, California inspection. based. It was central part of the country. Oh. You got the fire extinguisher. So what was the engine uh, when they oh, it's raced still, it? Well, Packard. That's why it's oh, the only. That's the one with the Packard. Yeah, it was actually in Packard Museum for years. Oh, I don't want to try to lift that up. Uh, I'm not sure we can. I don't even know. There it is. Wow. It was um, Gene Simon, his nephew, who built it. The way the voltage regulator is just mounted on a footing yeah. tube. <laughs> it's all pretty simple stuff. Which, by the way, is the secret to doing these cars. Simple. You have to approach it in the same mindset. And it's scary when you bring it into a restoration shop because they want to do a beautiful job, mm -hmm. which is what everyone would want to do. And sometimes you have to do a practical job because the car, you have to take the cars a great deal of distance. Right. Now, what's Paul looking at over there? There's a, when I sold my hardtop shark, I made a mold of it so I could build another one. Ah. We have one in the queue. And I thought I saw a shark over there too. Yeah, there is. The garage is actually where all of the molds and body parts are. So. Some of the molds that he's made to replicate cars, like this orange one sitting over here by the shark in front of the tree. That's one of the newer ones. That's the front piece for the buyer's mold that he made. Um, that crumpled pile on the other side of the tree, that's what's left of a Devon, a uh, victim of one of the previous hurricanes. Hmm. But no, the garage contains all the molds. Wow. And then this uh, shark, I love this one because it's, uh, I, I call it the grass fire shark. I think you should paint it like neon green. This one was in a farmer's field and it was dry and the field caught fire <laughs> and uh, the car burned. Oh, what a shame. But, you know, Jeff has a mold for the shark and he's got other bodies he can pull from. So To minimize build times. In the mid-50s, they wanted to try to get stop having to Z frames and take more time. Build a car like the Victor Sespor, the Los Eight, or this on a frame that you don't have to modify. And the reason this hood scoop is the world's longest hood scoop is you could get these with a four flathead and put it right there without changing it. It's right in the front. Wow. That is right as about as far forward as can be. Yeah. Well, yeah we got a couple cars that we're going to see what the original it says on location. Oh, I can't see the number. Well, this is a crab distributor, so it's pre 49. Yeah. It's 48. Oh, yeah. No, it's definitely a uh, up to 48. Do you well, think, Paul, like you're the, being inspired for like another? The Ford gearbox. No, 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 no. Not sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not sure. Not free? Sure. How about free? 
Gotcha. <laughs> Someone put dual exhausts on this. Oh, this was the water tank is behind the engine. This is well, interesting. This was company by a company called Replac. Replac commissioned Philip Vegan in the brochures. They talked about Philip Vegan being hired as a designer. And they were worked since Alex Tremulus did the style work on the Allstate. Mm -hmm. And Tremulous and Eagle and Friends, I have all the Sears paperwork. This was supposed to be a car they were offered by Sears. And we have the emblem and everything and the logo and the whole story all in Sears stationery. Yeah. It's a much more, we've never told that part of the story much oh, at all. Yeah. I told everybody that story at Pebble. Yeah, well, good. Hmm. Well, Paul's car wasn't at all in this kind of nice shape. <laughs> Was it worse than this? No, no, this is actually the best one. Yeah. But not much. <laughs> well, now it's officially the best one. That's really incredible. See how they do the bumpers, Paul? That's what we really did in yours, too. Wrapped it in a, oh, wrapped yeah. it in aluminum. Yeah. Yours. This one in. And it's actually a sea channel. Huh. Hey guys, Mike and Discovery Classics here. Hope you guys are enjoying the video that's queuing up. Just wanted to take a minute and say thanks for subscribing and following the channel. Uh, it really means a lot when you guys comment and share our videos. And to that end, a lot of the analytics we're seeing on the back end here in the YouTube Creator Studio is that we've got a lot of people watching videos, but not necessarily a lot subscribing. So I know it's annoying and everybody asks for it, but if you get the chance, subscribe to the channel, like, maybe even share the video, and uh, we'd love to interact with you in the comments. So, Appreciate it and enjoy.